Hello and welcome to UC Today. My name's David Dungay. Today I am joined by Sean Hurst from Smash. Welcome to the show, Sean. How are you? Hi, David. It's great to be on. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Uh, a little bit cold, but uh, I'm good. It's that time of year, isn't it? So, uh, Sean, today we're going to be talking about uh, the future of uh, team collaboration. Uh, really excited to get into this conversation. But uh, for the uninitiated, do you want to tell our audience a little bit about Smash and yourself? Sure. Uh, so my name is Sean Hurst. I'm the Principal Regulatory Advisor at Smash. Smash is an enterprise communications compliance platform. Um, that title doesn't really do it a lot of justice. We are involved in a lot of the the oversight, the capture, the storage, and uh, downstream surveillance of communications that enterprises are using these days. We particularly work in the financial services sector uh, because that tends to be where the the biggest need is for this type of technology from a regulatory perspective. Fantastic. So let's get right to the uh, the big question: um, innovation in twenty twenty three. You know, where do you uh, feel this innovation is going to come from uh, with regards to collaboration technology next year? Well, wow, it it's an interesting space, especially since lockdown and the work from home shift, which now seems to be shifting back the other direction. But with that lockdown, with that uh, that working from home environment, it seemed to spark off a lot of innovation around communications technology because there was no other way really to communicate. You couldn't do that face to face anymore. What is interesting is what we've seen over the last couple of years. Uh, sometimes a, a new bit of technology will pop up that, that seems interesting, like blockchain for, for the longest time was was touted to be the, the next big thing. And there was going to be areas of business uh, like financial services that, that have this high degree of trust requirement that blockchain seemed like a great fit for it. But it's it's expensive from a technology perspective. Uh, it's it's quite difficult to do, quite complex, and it hasn't really taken off. So we haven't really seen a lot there. The next thing that's coming up, kind of in that frame, and and whether it comes to fruition or not, is around the metaverse. So that's going to be interesting to see where where that heads. Uh, right now, it's it's an area that a lot of vendors are exploring. Microsoft introduced Mesh a couple of years ago, which is kind of their version of the metaverse that you would have heard of from you know, Facebook, Facebook's metaverse. Uh, during tw the 2022 keynote, uh, Microsoft keynote speech, Sachin Nadella, the CEO, he uh, discussed providing Mesh as a platform service in Azure that can be used by organizations to build virtual worlds. But Something that he did in that keynote was a bit of a demonstration around mesh integration with Microsoft Teams, which is the most widely used communications or collaboration technology by organizations out there. And that'd be quite interesting to see how that works, whether whether organizations, especially the organizations that we work with, whether they embrace this technology or not, we'll see. But we will be hearing a lot more about it in the next year or so, I'm sure. Yeah, I um, completely agree with you, although it does make me smile uh, when we start talking about things like uh, the metaverse. You know, we've got a whole heap of technology here today that we can some, sometimes struggle to get our employees to, to adopt. Um, on, on that adoption, you know, tell me about those challenges around uh, technology adoption that you're seeing and you know, how companies are going to overcome those. Yeah, so... Oh, you, you, you make a good point. The technology we have today, never mind this new technology, the metaverse and clever stuff like avatars and you know virtual whiteboards and things like that. That all sounds exciting. And from my techie, geeky heart, it's something I'd love to see more of. But enterprises don't really, they're not at the forefront of embracing these new technologies. And it's because it can be quite challenging to adopt. There's just so much great technology out there and you know, with, like I mentioned before, the, the whole lockdown scenario that spurred a bit of a gold rush of innovation. And it's difficult to keep on top of what is actually out there and what people are using. And it can be a little overwhelming. But when it comes to communication collaborations, one of the biggest challenges we see is around legacy platforms. So tech debt, if you're using an old platform and you might have been using it for the last 
15 years, uh, even even if you're using it for the last five years, you're generating a lot of content and you're, you're generating a lot of data. Being able to move that data into a new platform, into new technology, and you know, from a compliance perspective, from the sort of work we do, that can be very difficult, very expensive from a time perspective and a money perspective. So I, I see that as being one of the biggest biggest reasons that people hold off on moving to new technology, especially in play, you know, firms like financial services firms, that sort of thing. Uh, the current economic state is also adding a little bit of a twist there because it's realigning priorities. People are tightening up their belts a little bit, and that's changing the way that they're seeing, you know, whether they should be embracing these new technologies or not. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's just taking a bit of a different view on why I think adoption is quite difficult, um, especially just with the current state of, of the world, really. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk about um, uh, data for a moment. Uh, you know, it's become into, into focus more recently, I guess, uh, our data on collaboration platforms and how we can manage that. You know, what are you seeing? How can, how can companies better manage that, um, that risk of, of data? So there's two angles to look at it. Like, like I've been mentioning, I've been switching back and forth between it. You know, you've got your end state technology that could be something like Microsoft Teams, and you've got your downstream technology that you're using to provide compliance and you know, uh, assess your risk, that sort of thing. Now, from the communications and collaborations technology perspective that you're using, uh, make sure you understand it. Make sure you understand what you have. And you know, with these new features that keep, keep getting put out there, Microsoft Teams seem to be releasing a new feature every other quarter, which creates havoc for vendors like us, where, uh, for us, where we're trying to uh, assess the risk of these things. You've got to assess the risk as well. And if it's going to provide a, a risk that you cannot mitigate, then disable that feature. Uh, too many times we see firms just enabling everything because they didn't know number one maybe that they could disable it things like whiteboards if you're not capturing whiteboards and you have a regulatory requirement to do that maybe disable whiteboards yeah <laughs> so th there's that perspective then the policies and procedures you know align them with what you're using if you are embracing new technology if you are bringing in new platforms if you have made the switch to microsoft teams in the last couple of years Make sure that your policies and procedures are up to date and that they align with what you're doing with those platforms. Then on the other side, have conversations with the vendors, especially vendors like us, Smosh, we're happy to help. We have a lot of features available. If you already are using our platform, there might be features in there that you don't know exist and that could help you out. You want to enable those, you know, the audio compliance side of things in Microsoft Teams. We have the ability to do that. Just talk to us and we can help you out with that. So understanding your products, I think, is probably first and foremost with uh, managing the risk around this. And then, of course, just using a bit of technology that can, can keep up with the progress. We have so much innovation going on. Like, like I mentioned before, the, the last two years, three years, has been, it's been incredible to see how things have advanced. And from, you know, from, from our perspective, we're keeping up with that. It's not easy, but we have to keep up with that. And just understanding what is out there, what we can do, and what these communication collaboration tools can do, uh, that's, I think, paramount. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you, you mentioned keep, keeping up with uh, the changes and evolution going on in, in the market. Obviously, when you, when you talk about data, uh, you, I guess on one hand, you've got to talk about uh, AI and machine learning as well on the other um, tell me, you know, how, how are these two technologies going to impact the collaboration space over the next well, year, particularly maybe into, into the following year as well? AI, machine learning, it's, it's no longer a luxury, right? Uh, it's, it's a necessity. And we're going to see more and more of that as time goes on. Uh, for, for the longest time, people have thought of AI as something that's it's it's a bit of a geeky technology let's yeah you know, let's try it out but the thing is it's got to a point now that it is actually a robust tool to be used with your platforms uh when you're thinking about the sheer amount of communication and collaboration data that's produced every day which is constantly growing right it's we're we're, we're communicating so much more on our mobile phones on microsoft teams just daily that how do you how do you actually keep on top of that? 
you know, the supervision teams, the compliance teams aren't necessarily growing as quick as the data is growing. So what are you doing to manage that risk? AI and machine learning, machine learning can be used to make the, the whole process quicker and more importantly, more accurate, you know, reducing things like false positives, false negatives. Uh, the other angle to, to think about here, what we're, what we're going to be seeing around AI is that large regulatory organizations, uh, the EU, for example, have started putting together something called the AI Act. And we're going to see a lot more information about that coming out soon. I don't know when that's going to be released, but there's already a lot of information online uh, that will allow you to just see what that AI Act is all about. And it's about governing the way AI is used because... Yes, it can be used for good, um, but there's also some there's also some very risky things that could happen off the back of AI. So, I think that that's the flip side of it. There's going to be there's going to be quite a bit of progress over the next couple of years, I think, around AI and machine learning. Yeah, there's going to be uh, yeah. I think progress is uh, exactly the right word there, but people do need to be aware of what, of what's coming as well. So. Um, Obviously, we've, we've, we're in, we're in a, a hybrid working sort of uh, space at the moment. We've been in this space for a while. Uh, lots of companies today will be, uh, they'll have made their investments in this space or they'll be looking to make more investments uh, over the coming year as well. And what, what is your advice to those businesses looking to get maximum ROI out of their collaboration investments particularly? Like I mentioned before, make sure you understand what is out there in the marketplace and also, make sure you understand about, uh, what you already have. You know, technology is advancing and, and shifting constantly. And what works, you know, what worked for you five years ago, or even a year ago, might not be the right thing for you now. Um, you know, it's, it is about ROI, getting that return on investment. That doesn't just mean uh, financially. You know, it could be some of the most important things for, for financial institutions is their, their reputation. You need to manage the risk around that. And that to me is probably one of the biggest ROIs, making sure that you're making the most of this technology to, to mitigate that risk. Um, you know, get a deeper understanding of what your products are capable of. If, like I mentioned before, if you're using one of Smash's technologies, then have a chat with us. There's, there's a lot going on there that maybe you don't know about. Make sure you get some training, uh, you know, not, not only for yourselves, but also for your users. So you, you might be the CTO, you need to understand what the product is doing. But what we find happens just too often is the downstream compliance officers that are using our tools, for example, aren't necessarily aware of the best way to use these platforms. And they're not making the most out of it. They're they may be wasting a bit of time because instead of instead of three clicks, they're using ten. So I, I think just making the most of your existing technology, understanding it completely, and working with the vendor to to make sure that you're not missing out on some features that might already be included in what you have. Fantastic. Well, some uh, really valuable advice there, Sean. Um, look, Sean, thank you so much for joining me. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for, but it's been great uh, to hear your insights. No problem. It's great talking with you, David. And thank you for watching. You've been watching me, David Dungate, on UC Today. If you like today's conversation, please give us a like and a share on social media. That's it from me. See you next time.